Well, hello guys. Welcome to another edition of Chat with Charlie and Friends. And Dr. Thomas Collins is back on the couch. Are you sour? I am. I'm very sour, but I'm thankful to be here. Hello, guys. Sour, huh, Johnny? Yeah, sour patch. Just throwing all that stuff out sour there. Sour patch. But isn't that the one where it's like like nasty at the beginning, but it's all huggable afterwards? Yeah, I'll That's be cool. huggable in a few minutes. All right, a few <laughs> minutes? Um, gummy worms. In a few minutes. And then we got... <laughs> and then we've got Paula back with us. If you guys remember the show with Paula, she Paula was Aiden. our campus director of Tidewater Tech, a mm-hmm. beast of a campus. And now you are regional director. Yes, I am. Yes, you are. That's you got a beautiful shirt on, first of all. I am. That Listen, you don't know shirt. what I had to do for this shirt. I know you had to buy <laughs> shoes at lunch. <laughs> I know. I know that. So we're going to talk a little about, and I'll tell you, I'm going to open it up. Okay. So what's been on my mind, and this is sector related, not necessarily us, but we're part of the sector. Okay. Why do we make this so hard? What we do. I'm serious. Why do we make it hard? Why do we make it so hard? Like, I feel like it's an easy thing to do. Mm-hmm. Just focus on the students, build a poor, everything will work out. Mm-hmm. But we slice and dice, we get stressed, we mm-hmm. have this, we have that, and we make it harder, I feel, sometimes. Yeah. It be. Maybe I'm wrong. I told you I was going to throw out something, and we'll see where it goes. Some people do make it harder. You know, yeah. there's, I, I'm reading a book, another book, and, of course, Charlie guys it's a whole thing about our book we have to talk about that another time but i'm reading this book and there's two different type of leaders are people and organizations in in some dynamic but they're climbers and connectors and the climbers make it difficult because climbers are transactional people they're um, title driven they are um, maybe um, aggressive leaders uh, with, with no with no uh, agenda other than for themselves and so that's where the tough part comes. The connectors are transformational. They engage. They work with their people. They typically have more success than climbers do. And climbers are, initially you think, okay, that's a good term. I'm a climber. I'm going to be a climber because I'm going to climb the that's ladder. That's where I was going with right? it. I thought that was good. No, they're more transactional because they see only their, their vision is solely for themselves, not the organization, not the people they influence, not the people that need them. But the connectors are the ones who are usually the smart but hard workers. They engage. They have more promote more promotability. They're coachable no matter what capacity they are, whether they're a lower level manager or that they're a senior level manager. So I believe that climbers are people. We all know them. Can we, we be a climber first and then a connector? You got, Yeah, eventually I think you are. Because you're mature. Is that a maturity mature. thing? I think mm-hmm. at some point everybody mm-hmm. was a climber because we were Absolutely. so focused on being is that, successful. Is that a selfish trait though? I think it's selfish if you stay there. Yes. Because you don't grow. Yes. You won't grow. I, you've been yes. a climber. I've been a climber. We've all had a point Shit, where I'm we... I'm still climbing. Do, well, yeah, you climbing. <laughs> I'm, <just> <laughs> <laughs> I'm climbing right with you on the oh, side. I'm on Mount Denali. Is that, is that right Mount there Denali? You. Is that high? <laughs> I got that goat walking beside yeah. me and I'm like trying to get up there. <laughs> Sorry, Seriously, sorry, I mean, sorry. no, I mean, I just think that we've all been climbers because we had to grow into our leadership if we were evolving. So it's not a sector thing where I was going with it. It's a human thing. I think it's, it's a, a human, human thing. Th- now, let me add this because Paul is being too quiet. Is it a demo thing, too? Right. The, the younger workforce, I'd say maybe they start out as connectors first and not climbers. Mm. Oh, that's a that's is that a, a fair statement. That's fair. That's very fair because you have to have some identity as to what you want to do. Like, are you going to stay in the same position? Like, what's your what's your growth track? Like? like my son, I'm going to look at Paula for this one. Both of them, well, I shouldn't say both, but somewhat both of them, but definitely one. They're comfortable. Mm. They don't they don't have that kind of I got this point and I want to get to it. Mm-hmm. I'm going to do what I can. Like for us, I don't know about you, Paula. I don't even know about you, really. What? I had to move around a lot in order for me to get where I was at. I did. And then this is going to go to Jen Lyles, who was saying <coughs> about tenure and stage priority. Got laughing. But I moved around a lot I did too. because I had to I felt I was impatient at that time. So I had to move to get to where I wanted. Mm-hmm. I was impatient for it to naturally happen. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm hmm. What do you think about that? I just think it's so interesting because, and I, you know, we always joke around about PMP holding it down. But <laughs> when she started, I, I wasn't quite sure what I was going to say. 
But when you started talking, I said, yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking. Mm-hmm. I know people right now who who are climbing mm-hmm. and they won't stop climbing, but they need to connect. Mm-hmm. And it's like it's a maturity. And I've been thinking about it. For, especially, and it's not age maturity. No, it's career maturity. It's almost. it's both. Is it? I think okay. it's both it's maturity and responsibility. And it's funny because even since I've, I've gotten into this this role, the regional role, it's given me an opportunity to step away from a lot of, I think, um, people. And I've been able to see things differently. And it's there. There are a lot of people who are climbing and they're not connecting. Mm-hmm. And they're on their own mountain. Let me ask you say this and see if this this makes sense to you because you made me think of something. And this is an ambitious thing. But when you're a rep, you're very critical on the DOA. Why they do this? I don't understand <laughs> this. I don't get this. Then they become a DOA and like, huh, I get it now. Yeah, right. But then the regional, they're doing the same thing to the regional. I don't get this. I don't understand right. this. Yeah. I don't get this. Then they become a regional. They're like, huh, I kind of get it now. Right. I mean, is maybe, that kind of the same uh, thing? Maybe there's maybe there's some of that there, but it's also the ability to step away and just see things differently. Is that um, a self awareness? Maybe it, it is. So the, maybe the, and it's, it's perfect that you said that because the book is. Becoming a self-aware leader. Um, it's by a John Maxwell series. Another but, Maxwell book? But between him and Lencioni, I can't keep up. They all got books. <laughs> well, that's what I'm reading. <laughs> but he said this like is Calvin well. and Hobbes and everything. <laughs> <laughs> David Goggins. <laughs> <laughs> Although he does have some good stuff. <laughs> um, but with that maturity comes responsibility to answer your question. Because you, as you're growing in maturity, you're, if you're accepting and you're coaching and you're engaging, you're going to have another position. You're going to work your way up the ladder. You're going to be promotable. But your responsibilities change. So as a rep, when you become an assistant director, it, your perspective changes. Your responsibility changes. When you become a DOA, your maturity is changing yeah. because your responsibility is increasing. And so far up the ladder. So that it's like a it's a dual it's a dual dynamic that's happening if you're a connector though if you're a connector if you can that be a i'm sorry we can no, pull off here. no go ahead it's my show it's been a and while since i've been on it anyway so i, I definitely understand it's forgot. gonna be all day isn't it? i understand all day i understand yeah i know and now i forgot i was gonna say <laughs> kind of so um but when you're a climber you're all about yourself you're about the title and you're about who can see you but then you but see here's the hard part in that you've got to put trust in others are seeing it Mm -hmm. and if you don't see that part of it so there's i guess what i'm trying to say is there's responsibility on upward management the same thing with you so they can appreciate what you're doing so you don't feel like you have to selfishly be the shiny diamond amongst everything else do you guys get what i mean well that's you get what i'm saying I, i get what you're saying but that comes from the maturity part of it because of course, we're not going to be always a shiny diamond. You're not. I'm not. She's not. But we're taking an opportunity to lift our hands back and engage with others and train others and develop others, spend time with others, because at some point they're learning what we know. They become people in our seats. And then we start to and become that's the promotable. Connector part. That's the connector it, part. But that comes with growth. You can't stay whether you're a climber or a connector. You can't stay in the same spot every day and expect growth. That's just not going to happen. And if you're so busy being a climber, you can't get the real work done. If you're so busy focused on climbing, how can you really get, and you're talking about why do we make it so hard, right? Mm -hmm. Well, it's getting harder and harder to get the work done and the real goals done and achieve the objectives that we've set when you're so busy focused on, all you're focused on is climbing. You're focused on yourself. You want everybody to see you, right? And you want to get noticed. That's what you're busy doing. And that's feel, what makes that's everything it's so interesting, much harder. interesting, though. You, you know what I mean? Especially deal with humans. Like, we're in the human business. We're not selling yeah. T-shirts. Right. We're not selling anything else. Right. Which adds even a different dynamic to it, right? Right. When you're serving your self-needs. And we've talked about this on other mm-hmm. shows where you, you're serving your self-needs and you can't do that in this in this roles, the mm-hmm. roles we have. Mm-hmm. You have to serve their needs and we're a servant leader to that. Right. Right. You know what I mean? I understand, yeah. and I don't. And I Paula wanna, doesn't agree with me. No, I do. I'm, oh. I'm thinking while you're talking. No, I agree. Oh, that's I good. Do. I'm thinking yeah. also that we have to serve each other. We're serving our students, but we also have to serve it's each other. It's internal and external for sure. Yeah. Right, right. Because we can hurt each other 
by not serving each other. Right. And then it caused silos and then it caused mm-hmm. dysfunction of goalposts. Like your goal is different right. than my goal. And then I'm right. only looking at my right. goal and then the students in here, I don't care what your goal is. I need to graduate. And it and makes get everything job. harder. Right. Right. Makes right. everything harder. Right. And, and we need to distinguish the fact that between the noun and the verb, right? Oh, climbing. Now I gotta do a sentence. And I gotta figure <laughs> out climbing is an, an act. That's I'm a verb. the verb. Am I right? a verb or a noun? That is a verb. <laughs> yes, you're the verb. <laughs> like, People who assume what's a noun, a person, place, or thing. If you're, if Why is who it you be a are, her? if if because I'm a her, if <laughs> <laughs> if your being is a climber, that's where the deficiency is. You you have to. It's okay to climb because that's an action. We're moving forward. Is there We're a difference between a growth. driver and a climber? No, no. You can be a driver and a climber. You're still working toward a goal. Can goals. you be a connector and a driver? Yes, you yes. can be. Yeah. Yes, you yeah. can yeah. be. And I'd say that's where us three evolve. Right. I feel like. Right. Mm-hmm. But if you we're stay, drivers, but we're connectors at the same time. If you make me in a climber, you're a good thing. I think it, a driver and a connector. That's is a perfect a good combo. Thing. It's a probably. perfect yeah. combo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I because so. you, that's a good balance there. But if you make being a climber who you are as a person, you're not going to ever grow because you're not going to be coachable. You're not helping anybody else. You're just concerned about what you're doing. So let me hit you with this. Um, and then if you guys, I, she's got her clipboards, so you know, she's got stuff. Um, and boy, she classes out the place, Johnny. I will say, you know, George, George is in here helping us out oh, today. He's struggling a little now. bit with the five, four, three, two, one, but we got there. Um, I get compliments. You yeah. guys know who Mike Krzyzewski well. is? Who? Mike Krzyzewski? No. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He's a good, you know who he is, Johnny? You all know who he, you know who he is, George? Football coach? Good. He's a Duke basketball coach, previous uh, basketball coach, there okay. for many years. Oh, Krzyzewski. Just stay over there. <laughs> stay, 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 stay off my. Sure he, so, <laughs> he said when he was like 14 years old, he was the first time going to middle school, and he was leaving the house, and his mom said, "Make sure you get on the right bus." Hmm. And he looked at his mom and said, Mom, I know where the bus is. It's right there. I get on. She goes, no, that's not what I mean. When you get on that bus, if you're the driver, make sure you got the right people on your bus. Mm. And if you're sitting on that bus, make sure you're around people that are the right people that should be sitting on that bus with you. Mm. And I thought that when he's, he, he related that through his whole life, that he yeah. remembers that, get on the right bus. Get on the right bus. And it's I a like different that. way of spinning it, right? There's Good to Great and mm-hmm. other books we've read. And even the the 5DX book, I think, had a little bit Poor of that dude. type bus thing and, and genius zone and putting people in the right places. But is that part of it too? Your surroundings impact your either climber mentality or your connector mentality? Yes. I, I believe so. so. I have a strong you are what you that. surround yourself with. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Birds mm-hmm. of a feather. I mean, all the same. Yeah. Absolutely. So then that would say if you're a driver mentality, they're creating others. I, I use the word selfish, but I use it loosely. But other selfish climbers around you and you're not building each other up. Right. I think. Mm-hmm. Well, yes and no. I think that if you're a climber. You I think you kind of stick out. Most of the time, watch, most climbers aren't really, they don't have a lot of people that stay around them, maybe for short periods of time. Like attrition, like employee attrition mm-hmm. or morale or that, something like that. And they don't have a lot of people that stay, not around them. Think about some of our past leaders that were maybe climbers that we've encountered, not just here, but in other roles. Yeah. We look back and we say, you know what, that person could have been, we always say this, I want them to make it. They could be so good if they just engage their people if they spend time with their people if they come out their office we're very specific about because we know they know the job yeah we know that they can do it they've made it to this point with the role that they're in mm-hmm. we need them to do more usually that more part is the people part the engagement part the development is that the, the training part is it a confidence thing like i remember um john south south university he said two things to me is one is um no one's going to take your title away Mm-hmm. Meaning, in the in a, in a sense of, y- you don't have to be right to make sure the other person knows they're wrong. Mm-hmm. If you get what I mean. Mm-hmm. The other thing before I got promoted to regional is they had me go to the home office, and from the campus, mm-hmm. and go by everybody's office and just say good morning. Don't talk about work. Just talk to them about whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But not about work. Right. And and it was the best thing I ever did because when I got promoted, I had connections with them before, and the other time I was very transactional with them. Right, I was the climber, mm-hmm. but then 
in a weird way, I'm looking back and he was actually mm-hmm. evolving me in a, being a right. connector to try to be a connector. Was that hard for you? Yeah, because I, I for me it was. Because mm-hmm. when I'm at, whatever I'm doing, I'm in that zone. Mm-hmm. So if I'm doing sports, I'm in that zone. I'm right. not thinking about anything else because 80, I do have that like legitimate, not like everybody else, but literally do. So I have to be in the zone. Mm-hmm. So at work, I'm in the zone, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And a lot of people say, well, he's not smiling. He must be in bad. It's not that I'm thinking. I'm yeah. in the zone. Right? right. Well, I'm with my wife. I try to be in zone, except <coughs> for the cell phone. I'm in the <laughs> zone, right? So it was hard for me. And it's still hard for me this day. Right. Like you had me come out of my cocoon <laughs> in the mornings, if you remember that. Charlie used to come in. I don't know if you guys know this. I don't even know if we shared this. And when Charlie first started with the organization, oh, God, damn, that's I'm a morning person. So I walk in every morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Hey, Charlie. Good morning. I'm working. I'm working. Every single morning for like two weeks. I this one like morning too. I like, walked mm. in and he, he was like, uh, I'm, I'm working. Go. <laughs> and I said, well, you're at work. And I spoke to you. And he looked at me like, if you don't get that. She flipped those braids around? <laughs> yeah, that worked. Like, who are you talking to? But she to? taught me something there <laughs> mm-hmm. in a non-confrontational way. And, and mm-hmm. to this day, I, you know I work hard at it. He does. Paulette. Yeah. Like, I actually get here earlier. So to me, I've been here two hours. Just, I just get in here early, clean my head. And then I get here, well, hey. <laughs> <laughs> But there's things that we can impact people on when we go instead of being critical on them and talking behind their back, help them grow into those connector roles. And that's what you did to me in a a minor way. John South did it for me, you know, back in the day. But you have to have security to do that. You can't be insecure because if you're insecure, you won't be able to do that. You won't be able to like Mr. South. He was secure enough in his leadership and his in his development of you that he had you do that. Yeah. You were secure enough to do it. You didn't push back. You didn't go, oh, why do I have to do this? You I may roll my eyes. I may roll my eyes a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> may, you know, a bit of <laughs> but you became a connector. You know, you were coachable in that. You saw the valid the validity in engaging. You saw how important it was. People probably started to look forward to you coming into the office talking to them every day. That, but thank you. I'm sure they did. I do, Charlie. Well. So it's 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 I think it's a process that you have to and that's what makes it so hard. People don't want to go through the process. They just want it to happen. And it doesn't happen that way. You mm-hmm. have to you have to go through the process. And yeah. it's hard. It's not the hard part about it is going through the process. When you refuse to go through the process and you make steps, you have to do it over again. So when I was younger, my dad used to always tell me and my mom used to always say, do it right the first time. Otherwise, you're going to keep getting the same test over and over again. And you're now having to backpedal. If you do it right the first time, you don't hear my mouth. You now have to revisit it again. It's done. It's completed. You've grown on to the next thing. Yep. And that's the same thing in life. People don't want to go through the process. They want to skip steps. So true. You don't want to mm-hmm. train your reps. You don't want to do Friday training every day at 830. You don't want to audit every day um, your Z tracks. Now you're skipping steps. So when you miss your starts, or when your shore rate is poor, then you have to go back to stuff that you should have been doing right the first time. That's right. And then be self-confident to say, right. okay, I didn't do this, mm-hmm. but I've got to do this and stay consistent. Right. Yep. Right. Yep. And sure. you say the same. And I say the same thing for students, right? When you're a campus right? And students are going through the same thing mm-hmm. our employees yep. go through. All right. Exactly. Same exact thing. Just do it right the first yeah. time. Well, we beat that up. I like it. I like it. What mm-hmm. you got in that clipboard? You got something for us? I had a question. Uh-oh. What's one food that you would eat for the rest of your life every day? Gosh, dang it. Fat Charlie or skinny Charlie? I want skinny Charlie. Okay. I don't want right to go backwards. Right now, I go through phases, though. Really? Right now, my phases, I would eat street corn every single day if I could. Really? Street oh, corn? Yeah. Like, get that corn out of my face. What movie is that from, Johnny? Oh, my God. Street corn? Yes. What is Napoleon Dynamite. Like I don't know. I have no idea. <laughs> you just like street corn. I love it. Um, on the cob or you guys shave it off? I like off? it. I also like it shaved off. Do you go like to the amusement park and get yourself a big old half a leg of No, I've been making it. Turkey leg. <laughs> oh, oh, like turkey leg. No, I've I been making like it. I do like turkey leg. I've been making it. Corn on the cob. Whatever yeah. it is. I just love corn. I don't know what's going on. But street corn is different though because they yeah. put an extra a lot of seasoning stuff. in yeah, they a put lot the, of stuff. It's like cheese. mayonnaise and some cheese mm-hmm. and some different seasonings. That's horrible. It's so mayonnaise good though. I don't like mayonnaise. It's weird, but it's good. By the way, mayonnaise. How can you go to Chick Fil A and that thing is in a packet and it's not going bad? I don't understand that. I don't either, Charlie. It drives me crazy. I don't. 
I don't really eat fast food. I don't, I don't use know. You don't. I don't eat fast food, so. You don't eat slow food, so. <laughs> just, she got like, her Tupperware, though. Yes, I do. I have my meal preps that I make. So mine's black beans. You like black beans? Hot sauce. I mean, that's really? not a food, but I got to You like black beans? I love black beans. That's good. That's good. Yep. All right. So I have another question. What was your favorite thing you did as a kid that you used to like to do? Mm. Hmm. What did you used to like? You got to look back, huh? Real far. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, remember? I'm going to tell you what I used to like to do while you're thinking. Would you have like pickup jacks or something? Or <laughs> say, what? what did you have? <laughs> pickup <laughs> jacks. Pickup jacks were fun. We need, as a matter of fact, I need to find some pickup jacks. I would kill you in that, Charlie. I love pickup jacks. Be like a cow. <laughs> I, <love it. laughs> I don't know. There were a few things like riding my bike or we used to go roller skating on Friday nights. Like that was so Friday much fun. night roller yeah. skate rink. Yes. yes. No roller skating was happening for me, but I got dropped off at the rink. <laughs> <laughs> Did you go inside? That's the question. The bathroom's in there. But I mean, other than that. <laughs> All right. That's the question. All right. My dad would sit outside and make sure we went inside. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I grew up in That's Mississippi, right, yeah. so what I used to love to. Um, we used to go pick honeysuckles and, and suck mm, honeysuckles. I used to yes. love that. Seriously, I, I love honeysuckles. That. Yes, I loved honeysuckles mm -hmm. and sugar cane. So we sugar could take cane. it. We didn't have sugar cane, but we had take honeysuckles. It, cut it and just real. eat it right there out the field. Mm -hmm. Now, can you just, imagine doing honeysuckles right now? I wouldn't. No. <laughs> To pesticides and stuff. No. I wouldn't put none of them Probably in my mouth. Probably, no. Mm -mm. But no, I used to do but that. But we did. We used to do that. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I ever had, had a honeysuckle. You Is it a plant? You take off the back of it, don't you? And it's, suck it's, it? Yeah, it depends on how it's budded. Sometimes they're like this, and you can just take it. And, but sometimes if they're real tight, you pull it out. and. We used to catch lightning bugs. I don't oh, ever yeah. see any lightning bugs Did you bugs make rings anymore. out of them? Yes. Sorry, Peter. But did you ever <laughs> you take thing up with them right there? And you're yes. Like, I gotta go we used to catch the June bugs, and we would tie a string. Double, sorry. Two <laughs> <laughs> strings okay. to their legs. <laughs> oh my gosh! Oh, Are you man. serious? Yeah, that's like that's horrible. Yeah, that is. Dude, we can get what about you? What did you do? We'll get letters. My absolute favorite thing, and I was thinking about, is I had a Pook Maxi. You know what that is, Johnny and George? Oh, what, what? is a Pook Maxi? Moped. <laughs> oh, you had a moped. I had a moped. I used to <laughs> moped everywhere. Are you serious, Charlie? Mm -hmm. I had such a good time on that. Mm. I just went everywhere in that thing. Not, I didn't have a moped. No, I didn't have a moped either. Mm -mm. No? No. I mean, no. I grew up in the country. We had four wheelers. I'm sorry. I just say it. Nah, I'm just saying. I didn't know where would I ride a moped. I miss that. Other than sports and stuff like that yeah. growing up. Yeah. But mm -hmm. moped is my favorite thing to do. You didn't say your favorite food, by the way. We missed that. Oh, yeah. What was your favorite food? Um, my favorite food right now is probably ground turkey. Chicken neck and <laughs> chicken neck. <laughs> what do you call that? Chicken. Ground turkey. <laughs> I have this thing. Okay. This concoction <laughs> I've been eating. It is ground turkey with um, cut up asparagus. Of course. And cut up bell peppers, green bell peppers, and green onion. And I just steam cook it, it up, all together and steam it up it, and put some Worcestershire sauce on it. So good. That's, That's what I've been eating. Good. I've I actually been eating it all week. What do we eat at your house, Fourth of July? Um, greens. The greens were <laughs> Awesome. Turkey necks. <laughs> no, the greens were the best. I seriously, the best greens I ever had. Really? And we used to go in South Carolina, Myrtle Beach. We used to go, always go. This one place had the best, the best greens I've ever, I can ever cook, had. I can cook some greens now. They were good. That's my, that's my Mississippi thumb. I can seriously, they greens. were really, really good. Yeah. yeah, I can cook some. I'm just telling you, I'm, I'm not selling plates or nothing, but I can cook some greens. They were good. <laughs> let's go back to this bug on a string thing. No, let's so. <laughs> How and it would actually that? live like it bzzz. i guess that i mean yeah they you would hold and they would like fly around in a circle like it was because they're trying to get away they're trying to catch their mama <laughs> like that's not even fun Why, who came they were i don't know they were june bugs and they would what just, is a june bug they're beetles they're the green beetles is that a fancy name for cockroach no, no cockroaches not. aren't green. I don't want to Yeah, you see the big beet. <laughs> what do they call them? They're big. The green beetles, like water bugs, like big, like pal bug. palmetto bugs. I used to call no, 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 no. Palmetto green. bug is a nice name for a roach. That's a roach. No, that's a water bug. No, it's roach. Thank you, Paula. Oh, it uh, is. Because my mom used to say that. Oh, that little palmetto bug. Get that out of here. I'm like, Mama, that's a roach. That's a roach. <laughs> <laughs> a palmetto bug. Don't. That's put. a roach. Yeah. Oh boy. Please. They wait till the lights. All right, what else you got? I like Go this. Okay, let's, okay. Let's All right, so other thing is, um, what verb best describes you? Climber. 
that was for you. <laughs> Connector. <laughs> no. It's a verb. Mm. Oh, like let's it. switch it's it up. Like an oh, no, no, no. Let's switch it up. You describe Paula in no, a verb. No, we're not doing Paula, that. Paula, you describe It's like a dating verb. game, and then we hate each other the rest <laughs> of the day. <laughs> well, it started off that way today anyway, so let's <laughs> we'll go ahead Kinda and finish did. it off. Describe Charlie as a verb. Give him a verb, and then you give Paula a verb. Adjective or a verb? Because adjective is more... Yeah, adjective would be better. More descriptive. A verb. Mm. You, can we just say a word? Do a word. Thank passionate. you. Passionate. Don't get mad. See, she furrowed up. I'm sorry. Charlie, Charlie <laughs> is passionate. Ooh, I like that. He's very passionate. He really is. Yeah. What about Paula? Passionate. I'm, I was going to say the same word, because there's things that you've done at the campus that others will not do and haven't done. What's it? She's a risk taker. I want to say risk taker, but I want to say this. Um, I'm going to say caring. And there's a, there's a reason why I say that. But it's caring. Caring. She's tenacious. Very tenacious. I like tenacious. But, but it's what I was trying to think of. There's there's a there's a like a hard candy. Mm -hmm. But in, inside it's very caring. You know what I mean? <laughs> tenacious. But there's a caring overlay to it. Mm -hmm. You know what I, this, yeah. I I mean this in a very high compliment. Um, because you are tenacious. You're a driver. You expect the best. But once you get it, there's a lot of caring and all yeah, of that. She is. You know what I mean? I get it. You are. And I would say that about you, too. Oh, well, thank yeah. you. 100%. Definitely. Thank you. thank you. You're a mentor. I would use that word. Really? Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. I did that. I would definitely mad. say mentor. <laughs> no you really are you. to a lot of people oh i appreciate yeah, that to a lot of people I probably people that. you don't even realize I, I oh i interviewed somebody in dallas for um an admissions rep position a couple of weeks ago and she got on the phone and she said i could not wait to talk to you that was the first thing she said and i said oh okay i'm just the normal i didn't know who she was yeah she said you don't remember me but i came and i trained under you when you were at strayer no lie i said are you serious she said yes you were a regional and i had two campuses in dallas and two in alabama and she was at the dallas irving campus and she trained at my plano campus at the time there was a plano campus yeah. she said i remember the music you used to like to play in the morning how you started your day um you gave me time off when my mom was ill and I was in awe. She said, and our kids are around the same age. Your daughter should be 21. Your son oh, should be around 15. That's a lifetime. And I said, oh, my God. I was blown away that she remembered. So she said, you're very firm, but fair. She said, I just couldn't wait to talk to you again. And I'm, I just was so happy when I realized I was going to be interviewing with you. I'm, that is awesome. I didn't, so to your point, I did not realize Because you're a mentor. I just and you didn't don't know. Need, because you don't know it. That's why you're a good mentor. Oh, and I'm going to say something about both of you for the gender of females. You guys do represent yourself well, as far as I'm concerned, for other young people or executive, want to be executives, think of this, how to carry themselves, Thank you, how to conduct themselves. Thank you. You both do a very good job of that. Thank you. Thank You're you. welcome. Thank you. Yeah. I think you it comes do a trust with, fall um, uh, yeah, we could do the trust fall. <laughs> I weigh more than you, though. <laughs> so you have to ground yourself, hold your core. <laughs> these guns yeah <laughs> some solid too <laughs> oh, good. Oh, gosh. so i was telling um um talking to about paula as well and, yeah. and our role as leaders and i met paula when i first saw the organization maybe 30 days after i started they paired the cds up and i was in florida and so they they paired us with people that they thought we were would connect with yeah new, new cds mm -hmm. she picked me up from the airport we had the retreat in williamsburg so mm -hmm. we would drive from norfolk to yeah. williamsburg so was with her the whole way and that's the first time you ever met mm -hmm. never met her never met her connected with her instantly mm -hmm. uh we talked periodically um, from campus to campus when I was in Florida and she was here and then I moved here. Never ever and over the years had had such a respect for her and her knowledge and her time with the company and just from then into now to see where we are together is exactly what we're talking about. We didn't always agree. As a matter of fact, there was one time she's like, hey, leave my campus. Don't look at my people. Leave them alone. Please go. And I'm looking like, um... I know how you were looking. <laughs> are you talking to me? <laughs> and I was. I was, like, I was like, leave. I said, just don't look to the right and don't look, just go. I need you to go. <laughs> I, could, I could not have been that. I was like, mm, 
Peck have you <laughs> seen each other grow? Yes. yes. Like over yes. the years. Yes. It's, it's, but you know when you're around someone like your spouse or whatever it is, you're there. So sometimes you don't see it as well. It's have crazy. Have you guys watched each other yes. grow? Yeah, so because much. she was the campus director in Orlando. At our um, Orlando That's right, business campus. Mm-hmm. And I just when you just said this, you, I thought about you and you had made you had um, ordered breakfast for us when we had our campus director meeting mm-hmm. there. Mm-hmm. And I don't know why I just picture you standing there. <laughs> who she is today is not who she was no. then. And I'm mm-hmm. not who I was then either, but mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Crazy growth. What's your yeah. t- how long you've been with us? Uh, seventeen years. 17, almost eighteen. Ten. Ten. That was yesterday. Mm-hmm. Well, b- roughly, but yeah. ten year mark. Ten was years. It? Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's great. Yeah. That is great. But then I had to be willing to learn from her too, because she's been with the company longer than me. Because you're a connector. Right. I had to be willing. Like I'm. I'm humble. I'm humble enough to learn from anybody. My dad, when he was cleaning um, offices and cleaning buildings, he would take us with uh, with him. And we, you know, he's always talked us to have a respected person. You know, you can talk to a janitor just like you talk to a president of a company. You can learn from what anybody. A tremendous thing right? to teach someone. And so I had to understand, you know, individuals like Paula who were strong, a force to be uh, to be reckoned with with the company, dynamic, results oriented, driven, no nonsense. But I still needed to be humble enough to learn from her because I, I couldn't come in and say, well, I, I, I've been in this industry long. I came from admissions, too. Because you're both alphas. Yeah, we I mean, both, both are. both are alphas. And, but, and that but says a lot. from her. Like, now she teaches me. So, yeah. Yeah. The yeah. student became the master. <laughs> oh, gosh. She did. That is <laughs> such a mess. <laughs> she really that did. That is not true. What's that from? <laughs> Karate <laughs> Kid or something. Karate Kid? Mm-hmm. I don't know. I, I just on, I know I heard off. it somewhere. <laughs> I thought it was that old kung fu movie, but the uh, cartoon. No, <laughs> no, no, I think no. It is Karate Kid. Carradine, remember him? No, You're too young. You don't remember David Carradine, the show Kung Fu? No, no. Are you serious? No, I just didn't watch it. No, I know Kung Fu Hustle. Of course oh, you do. Of course you do. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't watch that either. That's yeah. for our late night episode. Mm-hmm. All right, one more, one more, and then we okay, one more. Okay, um this is a a really good. I think this is something that is um, thought-provoking, but it shows our value and who we are and how we think. So I really want to know from you, what gives your life meaning? What gives wow. your life meaning? Both of us, right? Mm-hmm. You go for ladies first. Oh, no, no, no. I think she goes to you first. No, but but I'm a gentleman, so it's ladies no, first. No, she asked you first. God, what gives my life meaning? Yeah. I think this question is important because uh, we're all leaders, but we're people. Yeah, and there's that thing, there's that thing that we all have that gives creates a larger value in who we are and allows us to be great leaders, allow us to connect with people. Yeah, because we have a lot of hats that we wear. You know, I'm gonna answer it this way, and, and I want you both to tell me if this is not the way it should be. Not, not no, like my answer mm-hmm. is my answer, but I mean, if it's not the right direction. So my son just had a baby, grandbaby, two months old. Oh, bug. A little bug, little, <laughs> little tater tot. And um, my whole life changed when I had children. And I actually think it evolved me more from that climber role to a connector role in a weird way. Mm. Right? And so what gives me meaning is their security. Mm. And it almost makes me have more pressure sometimes than I need to. Mm-hmm. You remember what we say of campuses and we say sometimes our urgency is greater than theirs. And that's right. a problem, right? Right. And as a parent, and that is my world, right? I mean, you you and I got this. That's mm-hmm. my world. And there's times where I feel like my life urgency is more than theirs. Mm-hmm. And I have a hard time adjusting with that, right? Mm-hmm. But work everything is that like everything I do is to progress that direction, either mentoring them mm-hmm. or doing this up to that. I would say that. Is that the, is that? No, I like that. I yeah. like it. Um, you made me think of something because we, the reason why it's a sense of urgency more so for you is because you've lived this life without them. They've never lived yeah. it without you. Yeah. So you know what's out there. They don't necessarily know. Even work, you know, just to really take this home as directors of missions out there or mm-hmm. whatever role you're in, mm-hmm. in in our sector inside the campus, those outside reasons mm-hmm. can influence your inside world, like at work or something. Mm-hmm. And 
I could never compartmentalize, but I had a career mature to not let that affect what was my real goal right. is to get them there. If you make, you make sense, like right. you need to take that to a start where you get stressed on a run rate or you get this and you start to cut a little corners and you're like, I don't want to see that. I'm still doing the right thing and stuff like that. And then all of a sudden you're doing things the wrong way right. instead of being honest, ethical and things like that. I don't know if you get what I mean, but I do. yeah, that's my life. That is purely my life. And my son has reinforced that with a grand baby. Oh, bug. Little June bug. Baby. Baby. Wishers. Hmm. Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> they had a rough, guys. They had a rough start to the morning. I was down there minding my business, and they had a rough start to the morning. It was all her sassiness. <laughs> so, it was him. It's every it. morning. It's him. <laughs> Got a week and a half for the August start. No, no lollygagging. <laughs> no, Ain't no, no lollygagging, lollygagging right now. Pick yourself up. No lollygagging. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I think mine is oh, it's so many things. It's I think it's my of course it's my family, but it's my job. It's where I, I think it's my past. It's where I came from. Mm. Yeah, it's from it's. Um, because I, I know you know a lot about my past, but I just um. Knowing where I came from and where I am now, it's all, it's just so sacred to me, you mm -hmm. know? Cause I do you have to pinch yourself sometimes? Yeah. I do. Yeah. 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 Because I, I came from nothing, yeah. like bottom of the barrel, nothing. And um, looking at, you know, being with our students and a lot of, a lot of times our employees, right. um, being able to tell them that you can do this. Right. And so this straight from the heart. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is my world. I mean, I didn't come from money. I didn't come from anything. I came from a survivor of suicide. I, I had two little boys to raise by myself, um, making six dollars an hour. Like now, granted, that was years ago, but still, right. I mean, I had I had nothing. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I made myself everything that I am, and mm -hmm. so I mean, I think. I don't, I, I think I am me, you know, mm -hmm. and, and my husband knows it's important to me. Like I, I don't depend on him. I don't depend on anybody. I right. am. Yeah. I am. It's SMS. Work. Call it single mom syndrome. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's something. Then you've don't been a single mom. Mama. No, don't mess with mama. Cause mama can do a lot. Yeah. yeah. But those are the people, if you think about just in generalization, mm -hmm. and I think we talked about this on a show before, those are the people not that scare you, but those are the ones that really want it. They, they do grind for it. Oh, they I will. thrive for it. They they don't take anything for granted. They earn it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. I can lose it in a day. Because you because because you know Just you can like lose it in a day. And other people that have had that or something, they don't appreciate what they've had. So it, it's not the same caliber right. of rise. Right. Right. Does that right. make sense? Yeah. No, yeah. I understand. Because I've I've, I've yeah. slept in a car. I mean, I I've, it's there have been moments where this stuff has happened. So well, you're you know, a good person. Yeah. Well, thank you. And it's you are. That's why you're so caring, though. That's why you can when think about when you decided to get rid of security at trades and you started feeding students peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. People thought that was the cra craziest thing ever. I remember you asked me. I was like, Paula, I don't care. Feed them. I don't care. I thought it was just like a thing she was doing. She bought a new refrigerator. She, All she of it. kept it stocked. She got a home. And to this day, how many years later, she's still doing that. And that is if it does, if they're not fed that day, it impacts the campus. And there's a there's because there are people who need things. Absolutely. And there are people who value the smallest things in life because it keeps them going. And those are the people that make a difference. They keep mm -hmm. driving towards their success. Yep. Yes. Yes. And they'll appreciate. I mean, there will be. And that's why, you know, you'll have people at the school who will fuss and say, you know, well, I know five people took it and they didn't need that sandwich. I'm like, yeah, but one person got it that really needed mm -hmm. it. And that's what matters. You don't don't yeah, worry exactly. about all the other ones. It, right. it doesn't matter. Right. Right. So. And that those people that got it that really needed it, they'll remember it. Yeah. yeah. One day, ten years from and now, and maybe they'll pass it forward, exactly. right? When they yeah. get to exactly. that thing. Exactly. Yep. That's true. That's exactly. True. I'm gonna say what gives my life meaning is my role. Uh, really. Mm -hmm. Understanding my role as a mom, as a mm -hmm. wife, uh, at work. Um, I, I'm, you know, I'm a very structured and ordered person. So that if I'm out of order, it takes me off off my game and I will have to reset. And that's as being a mom, whether I need to meditate more, wake up a little earlier, whether it's my physical health, my mental health, 
uh, my emotional stability. There are times where I think Paula's called me and I'm just sitting. And she's like, what is wrong with you? What are you doing? I was like, I'm processing. I need to get, mm-hmm. I need to, and you've asked me, you've actually caught me sometimes quiet and yeah. just kind of solitude because I know at some point something's off whack. I have to stay centered in my role because it gives my life meaning because I know if I do that, then I can help others. And I don't want to ever be in a position where I can't help somebody, whether it's financially, whether it's something they need to hear from me, whether it's um, leadership, yeah, whether it's a hard conversation. I've had people call me in this company that are leaders confidentially and ask me for advice. And I don't give people advice. I don't give grown people advice. Let me just say that. But I will direct you in a way to say, hey, based on what you're telling me, I would look at this. Right. I would try this. I would follow up doing this. And, and and they and confidentially, I don't even know if they've ever told anybody. I've never told anybody. But I do know that I don't ever want to be in a position where if I had to help somebody, that I couldn't. Mm-hmm. But you take care of yourself first. I have to. You know the mm-hmm. first thing I thought of? because Self-preservation. Fly a lot, but we fly mm-hmm. a lot. Yes. You know the oxygen man test? Yes. you got to put yours on first yes. before yes. you can give yes. it to someone yeah. else. Yes. I have to. I, I wake up early in the morning. And that's not selfish. I, yeah. I, I, I Listen, yeah. when I'm up early I, actually, in the morning. Actually, it's the most unselfish thing. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I have to be alive to help you. Yeah. And that's a lesson for, for anybody in a leadership mm-hmm. role that mm-hmm. should listen to this. Yes. Yep. You got to take care of yourself first before mm-hmm. you can even start. You're no good. You, you have to take care of someone else. else. You have to. Now, I'm Charlie's so funny because I've been doing these calls with women, like this women group. He'll come in and say, what are you doing? You on your call? <laughs> <laughs> now, what I say, are you finding Jesus? Yeah. He'll say, <laughs> I'll say, listen, I need him for you. <laughs> he did tell me what he says she's on one of her Jesus calls. <laughs> And sometimes I might just meditate. <laughs> Depends. But I have to position myself every single day. I can't. I'm not that person that just can walk out the door willy nilly. I just walk right in there. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> I do think about I just bust in her off. I'm like, what are you doing? Uh, I do. I'm on a call. It's either Isaac on the phone or she's finding Jesus. Oh, yeah. Isaac on the phone. Oh, yeah, <laughs> early. Early. <laughs> Dr. Z, hey. That's what We're on Isaac. <laughs> He beats Mike Bragg, by the way. Lord, I, yeah. <laughs> can I buy <borrow> this? <laughs> exactly. Oh, so that's Edit. that's pretty much that's what gives me meaning. Like I really don't want to ever not that's be a in a really position. Good it is. question. I don't really be in a position not to be able to because we've all had situations where we needed something from yeah. somebody, and not to be able to 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 get what you need, or especially if you're trying. Like if someone's trying especially if you're trying and then I can't help you because I didn't prepare or because I didn't do my part. Right. That would kill me. That's to your point. That would that's, kill me. Mm-hmm. And that's our role as a leader, the, mm-hmm. the, the responsibility that mm-hmm. comes with our leadership. Yeah. right? Yeah. And sometimes people ask me questions like, hey, you know, you called me for a reason. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. But that's it. also the mentorship quality that you're not giving them what they exactly want to hear. You're mm-hmm. giving them the advice to help them as a person. What they need. You know what I mean? I'll give you what you need. My kids struggle with that. They don't appreciate it at all. I don't appreciate it sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Kai, my daughter Kai, she says, Mom, I didn't call you for that. I don't, I, I need, well, you can't tell me what to say. <laughs> and my son's, here we go with another motivational speech. Here we go. I can see she's just <laughs> saying that right now. Bruh, can we please do something? Hey, that's just, and I told him this the other day. <laughs> Because he called me bro. He does it all the time. Cuz. Mom. What is that shit? Ma, no, it's mom, mom mommy, bruh. <laughs> <laughs> That's a shirt that I have. And um, he said to me, when, when I, I said, son, listen, I know you don't want to hear it. I said, but you're never going to look back 10 years from now and say, mom, you didn't tell me. Yeah. You didn't prepare me. You may say I didn't want to hear it. And I wasn't willing to receive it. Mm-hmm. But you're not going to say you didn't get it. And, and no matter what, he's listening. And that's yes. how I feel listening. about employees. Yep. You might look back and say, you know, Katrina, she said that lady to me. She was not happy with me when she first got hired as the DOA. I was on her. I had my foot on her neck for a long time. You did. And, and then I jumped on. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And finally, she said, that lady. I said, hold on. What lady are you talking about? Better about me. It's like what lady? <laughs> Katrina didn't. <laughs> she did. She did. Paula said, like, "Please at her leave." Now, though, yes. Honestly, though, yes. Look at it. And that's a credit to her. Yes. From persevering and listening. Yes. And and, and evolving. Yes. But I knew she. I knew she had it in her, and I knew she could handle it. 
Just like you. She just couldn't breathe. And I think she just couldn't. She couldn't breathe. I think she was gasping. She was like, "I'm gonna win this fight." I th- listen, and I think I told her one time. I said, "She she knows you can handle it." Mm-hmm. I think I said that to her mm-hmm. because I knew you wouldn't give her more than she could handle. Mm-mm. She's she she is going to be. I mean, she's a mentor now, but yeah. she's gonna follow in those footsteps. She's, gonna she's a force. Katrina, she's tough. she's a force. Katrina, Katrina's getting ready for prime time. Yeah, she's I'm a force. You that Katrina is. She's a force. Guys, all three of us have a meeting. We do. This show ain't our full time oh, job, and we're gonna yeah. be late. We carved out time for this, guys. Will you um get back to calling us out end of the show? Oh. Don't be all me. Like, don't do that. No. See, Johnny? We're going to clip that part I'm back on the couch out. again. You know, edit that trash Who would have thought? Yeah, um, let me be quiet. I ain't going to say <laughs> Charlie. Thanks for joining us for Chat with Charlie and Friends, guys. It's so great to be back on the couch with Charlie. <laughs> And also Paula yes, thank and you for Massey join us. And uh, we want you to just remind you guys that, you know, as you grow in your leadership and as you're learning from the people that you sit next to every single day, decide, are you going to be a climber or are you going to be a connector? Thank Love you so much, it. guys. Have a great day. Thanks, guys. Bye.